So I just finished listening to the UAP hearing via congressional hearings. And I got to say, buckle up, Buttercup, because it was intense. Now, the most important and most fascinating when Chairman Mr. Grotham discloses, and this was talked about in the news, but not to this detail. I'm deeply alarmed by the reporting of massive um, of the massive drone drone swarm that flew over Langley Air Force Base in Virginia last December. Langley is the home of the first fighter wing, which maintains half of the F-22s in, in the U.S. Air Force inventory. Reports of this incident indicate these drones were roughly 20 feet long, flying more than 100 miles an hour at an altitude of over 3,000 feet. Yet the origin of these drones and their operators remains a mystery. Wanted to let you know about our other rapid fire news channel, ESN, IC News. Daily updates, rapid fire style. I know your time is extremely valuable. So if you want to hear about the latest headlines in a short amount of time, check us out. ESN, the link is in the video description box. And if you want to go to the free webinar we've got coming up Friday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, Send me an email, leakproject at gmail.com. We'll get you on the list. Learn how to make multiple income streams, doing what you love to do, and build your media empire, and keep being the change the world needs to see. Do you remember a while ago when the news was disclosing drone swarms around Langley that lasted for weeks? Like, just this one thing. Okay, well... First of all, wow, what the hell does that mean? What do these drones look like? Are they uh, from a foreign adversary? Are they ours? Is it some type of operation? Are they from some, you know, inquiring minds that are just like living in the danger zone and doing something super illegal that live in the States? Or are they extraterrestrial? They didn't really give us many details. Well, how about, I'm going to share some of the details with you now. About 20 feet in length, traveling at over a thousand miles an hour at 3000 feet elevation. Not once, not twice, not three times for weeks, swarms of 20 foot Drones flew over extremely sensitive, highly classified areas where nuclear bombers are held, nuclear arsenal. They weren't shot down. They weren't stopped. And now we have data disclosing these massive drones. Think about that. 20 feet. That's longer than a truck. They have motorhomes that are about 20 feet, like small motorhomes, like, like a class B or, or maybe a really small class C. Put that into perspective. And they don't shoot them down because if they get out the wire, like they've got these jammers that allegedly can take down drones, but because there's other airplanes in the area, they said it might cause disturbances or other planes to fall out of the sky or to have problems. But at a base like Langley? And then they talk about UFO disclosure, or I'm sorry, UFO retrieval teams. We have several whistleblowers and speakers, Mr. Gold, Mr. Schellenberger, Mr. Elizondo, and there was also a gentleman by the name of... Mr. Gallaudet disclosing emails that went around military personnel that disappeared shortly after. And in these emails saying, what are these swarms of orbs and UAPs during exercises? If you have any idea, if you know what they are, let us know. Eyewitness accounts, civilian pilots, military pilots, commercial pilots. And then there's talks of this project 
during this congressional hearing, a mysterious program titled Immaculate Constellation Mission. This is an alleged unacknowledged special access program created specifically to document UAPs. Multiple sources confirmed that the U.S. military and intelligence agencies are sitting on mountains of evidence, photos, high-resolution images, thermal imagery, video footage from helicopters even. Some of it includes orbs, spheres, rods. One case talks about a orb swarm surrounding an F-22 jet that has to leave the area and land. Testimonies of mid-air UAP encounters, like the Go Fast video. Also, personnel, government personnel injured via UAP. Not once, not twice, <laughs> but multiple people injured from UAPs, long-term injuries. I wonder what the workers' comp is on that. The UAPs aren't just in the skies. They're also talking about these USOs, unidentified submersible objects, moving under our oceans, interacting with humanity in ways that defy all current understanding of marine and aerial technologies. Speaker is going on to say that these aren't our technologies. There's no way we're even close to this. The adversaries, our adversaries, most likely don't have the technologies that we know of anyway, basically is what's said. Discussion of certain UAPs being entirely new life forms, possibly natural phenomena beyond our comprehension. Michael Schellenberger talked about classified thermal and photographic evidence that is yet to be fully disclosed to the public. Mr. Gold, this is really cool. The chief growth officer at NASA, Mr. Gold, or he was, now he says, I'm not speaking for NASA, I'm speaking for science. He argued that the full scientific investigation into UAPs is essential. NASA faced or personnel at NASA that wanted to research UAPs faced internal backlash, internal backlash. They were even ridiculed or threatened. According to Gold, if we want answers, NASA and other scientific agencies must be empowered to fully explore and share the data they already possess. One testimony is of an encounter that involved the Red Sphere that rapidly descended around an aircraft carrier. Witnesses also recounted seeing UAPs emerging from the waters near Kuwait. First one orb shot out of the water about 20 miles away from Kuwait. And then moments later it was joined by a companion orb that then they sped off into the sky. So what are these UAPs? What is this mysterious phenomena that, that defies our understanding of physics and technology? Why is so much information classified? Now, the hearing left me with more questions than answers, but it does give me a sense of confirmation that we aren't alone in the universe. Now, these technologies could be from a highly advanced civilization from Earth, kind of like a breakaway civilization. However, these technologies can certainly travel the stars, and it makes me wonder where they went, where they're going, when they're coming back and 2030 keeps coming to mind. Are we on the edge of a breakthrough in understanding extraterrestrial life and will they disclose civilizations from space in the near future? Or will it continue to be these hearings and these congressional hearings and oversight meetings, etc., where we get a little sliver, a little piece of the pie, but they never fully disclose? They do, but they don't back and forth. How much more evidence do we need for disclosure? Thank you for watching. Hit that bell for all notifications. Be well. Check back daily for new content because we upload content every single day.
Be excellent to each other. Be prepared, not scared, and be the change the world needs to see. It starts with you.